स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया module 2 which is on engineered wood as i had closed my previous lecture telling that yes wood is a very important building material which has been used since so many years but people have not stopped researching on how to use the wood in a much further better way and even use up the wastes or the remnants which are coming out from the wood industry so first we will have a discussion on what is engineered wood and the different types of engineered wood making of it using it advantages and its disadvantages so what is engineered wood is it is made by human beings and it is not only wood but it is a wood composite so here we actually it is made with help of adhesives and we use up the waste which is generated after getting usable timber as you had gone through the process of conversion you learned that yes a lot of wood goes waste at the same time wood has to be joined to make it a uh, total big surface so wood is very good when it is in cross sections you are using for support but when you need to cover long spaces make a flooring there you understand that you have to go for joinery then only you can use it but if we can convert wood we can use it in a much better way as a spreading element so let us see the first one which we will discuss is plywood which is not a by product but a converted wood but others what you see is laminated board block board and batten board which are made from the remnants of the wood industry on the other hand you see we have another set which are the boards we see particle board which also is called as low density fiber board of which again we have oriented strand board which also is a kind of particle board we have medium density fiber board and we have high density fiber board so you can see the pictures maybe you have seen these applications in furniture so let us come to what is plywood we talk of plywood every now and then and let us see what is it made of plywood so you all have used a pencil and a sharpener so let us see if a big log of wood can be pushed in and rotated against a blade what you do in case of a sharpener you can get thin sheets of wood or the lamina so you can split the wood into a lamina what advantage happens here you are taking it out and the grains are all in the in this direction in this direction now if you take another lamina of the same wood and place it in the cross direction then one layer of fiber moves in this direction the other layer moves in the opposite direction so then it strengthens just think of the cloth you are wearing the fabric it is a mesh so here you cannot do that so you are placing one layer on top of the other with the grain direction perpendicular to each other so two adjacent sides are placed 
just that such that the grains are in the perpendicular direction and that gives in strength. You are not weaving it, but you are joining it. So, you are using adhesives in between. So, the quality of adhesive is also very important. And when you keep on doing this, you will go to more thicknesses as you can see in this picture. See, you can see the different layers, one joined after the other. And if you can see, when there are only three layers, as you can see in the picture, you can differentiate this is the first layer, in between there is a sandwich layer and then is the next layer. So, it is all made and combined with adhesive and when you see three such layers, you call it a ply. So, only one layer like this, we call it a veneer and when three such combines, we call it a ply. How big you can go, how thick you can go, 13 plies are the maximum and that will achieve you a thickness of 1 inch or 25 millimeter almost. So, you can get ply boards of different dimension and what is happening here? Here you are getting more strength, it would not bend in this direction, neither it would not bend in this direction. So, it is much stronger than wood, you can apply any kind of load on it. Let us come to the salient points, how do we prepare it? We have the log as you saw the pencil, there is a blade through which the wood has to be rotated. But the wood as a dry, we could do this with a pencil because it is soft. But in this case, we have to again wet the log by putting passing steam through it and make it pliable. So, the blade when it rotates, it should be little soft, it should have little more of moisture. So, you are again putting it, putting moisture into it and then you are rotating in a veneer cutter. So, the entire log is put in a veneer cutter. So, now you understand you can get long sheets and that gives a dimension almost up to 8 feet you can get. That was not achieved with wood unless and until you could join them. So, if you have the width of the blade known and you can get around 8 feet long. So, it is usually coming in sheet form of 8 feet by 3 uh, by 8 feet by 4 feet. Now, when the thing comes out, you need to trim it, the edges are to be trimmed, then they are to be placed for drying. Sun drying is possible if there is abundance of land, otherwise you can go for controlled drying and it is desired that the moisture should go down to 4 to 10 percent. Next, you are to glue each of the veneer with application of adhesive in between. So, once you are gluing one over the other, this crisscross of the fibers or the grains happen which gives it more strength. What more happens there? Say there was a rotten part in the wood log. So, this wood log is being converted. So, say there was a rotten part in the wood log. So, this will come somewhere here. The next sheet when you are overlaying on top of it, that rotten part portion will shift somewhere here. So, when you are placing this on top of that, your weaker portion comes here. So, this happens the weak part gets spreaded in layers. So, that is again another advantage of using plywood. 
So, you are spreading the knots on different sides. So, maybe the next layer which comes you can just orient it little different this knot which was supposed to come here if it is same orientation could go here. So, you are spreading the defect within the surfaces and that reduces its weakness. So, at single point when the timber was not good at this part you have utilized it in this way. So, let us come back. So, this while you are orienting during gluing this has to be kept in mind and then after it is done with the specific number of plies you require you can go for redrying after putting it after subjecting the entire thing under pressure you are going for the redrying that is it will set the adhesive will allow the plies to get together and the strength will be gained and finally it is cutting the board in the chipping out the board uniformly in all directions so finish should be neat because it is it should be marketable so this is how we make plywood and get the advantage of it that you need not go for detailed joinery rather you can use it in a different way for covering as a covering material you can use it as a partition wall you can use it for furniture you can cover the top surface with a nice finish you can have a finish similar to that of good quality wood and no one can understand what is inside it unless it is moistened and the adhesives get loose. So, that has to be remembered that adhesive should be proper it should not absorb moisture once it absorbs moisture these plies these veneers will just come off. So, that will lead to the decay of the item. So, usually the top covering is made of a better sheet on that is called the face veneer and even by orienting it in different ways you can create some star pattern some diagonal pattern and those will all be giving you some aesthetically pleasing look you can have a teak ply finish. So, it is very difficult to understand exactly what is it made of furniture, partition boards, office partitions, wall paneling, formwork for casting concrete, seats for chairs, internal doors all can be made with plywood. Exterior grade plywood are also made of hardwoods hardwood veneers and it should have waterproof adhesive. Organic adhesives are not preferred because wood itself is an organic item and adding organic items to it organic adhesives to it make it more vulnerable to termites attacks of back growths. Now, how to allow the edges to remain better? You can actually seal this edge what you see with help of a leaping. So, once you finish this leaping with a good paint or a good varnish or a polish no one can understand what it is. So, the edges are protected so that they do not come out water cannot it cannot get affected by water and this is made of pure wood. So, this is called a leaping which closes or ends the edges. So, you need to add it at the end to give a neat finish and also allow this edge to be protected from moisture. Now, let us again come back we have summed up the merits shrinkage and expansion is low due to this cross grain structure which I have explained to you. It is stronger than wood in some cases it does not split when you are nailing you have seen the property of cleavability when you are 
putting a nail along the annular ring, a wood might split, but in case of plywood it will not. Large sizes of wood panels are obtained, which is very difficult to get through proper joinery when you are using pure wood. Defects can be spreaded out as I have shown you. Thicker plywoods can stand as a partition wall without any supporting framing also. So, you if you use internal partition walls, you can directly go for thicker plywoods and you can allow it. The greatest enemy is the moisture and low quality adhesive, good quality adhesive and proper leaping or sealing the edges would give a life of around 10 years of plywood which is almost com which is comparable with wood. Yes, interior uses are much preferred. You can even go for joinery in case of plywood which we had discussed while we covered wood. Now, let us move to the boards. The first one you see here is the wood lamina. The thin pieces of wood which comes out from the wood industry. They are to be shaped in such form of 5 to 7 millimeters. So, first you need to sort out what are the byproducts from the wood industry. So, these are all coming out from the waste generated. So, these are wood laminas. See the dimension, it is 5 to 7 millimeter thin. Now, if you can have same thickness by cutting through machine and keep on adding one after the other, you can get a core of thin laminas of wood. So, every time it is joined by means of adhesive. So, if the height is uniform that is the thickness in uniform and this varies from 5 to 7 millimeter, you get a assembly of laminas which will similarly work like wood. But what are the good points here? You are using up the waste generated and then you can cover it with help of a ply on top of it and on the bottom of it. So, it becomes one whole unless and until you see the cross section you cannot make out what it is. Yes, it is it can be used for any kind of superior work joinery can be done with it and this is laminated board. You can also have very thin laminas added like this one after other glued together which is which will also give a wood like finish that is called glue lamp. So, glued lamina that is called glue lamp that also behaves similar to that of wood. Now, when this lamina size increases let us go back to the slide you see wood blocks 25 to 50 millimeter that is 1 to 2 inch you can assemble them one after the other and you can create cores. You can cover it with ply on both sides and you can hide that how it is made, but yes you can do go for any kind of furniture work. The other one you can see wood battens here also as the pieces are big maybe only adhesive is not good, it cannot hold. 
So, in that case in the joints are created that is tongue and groove joint keeps on adding one after the other. So, glue lamp, laminated board, block board, batten board are the names and you see the grains of the lamination runs parallel to the length. So, you have to identify the pieces and orientation first. So, sorting out and then you create such boards which are equivalent to wood, but you are using up the waste from wood after doing some refinement of it. Covering it with the veneer or the ply gives it a better look, gives it a uniform look and allows the adhesive to be protected and the entire internal core to be protected from exposure to moisture. These are all suitable for carpentry work also. Let us move to the next one which are the MDF the particle boards which have majorly three classification the light, light one, the medium density one and the high density one. How do we attain it? We attain it again by use of adhesive and application of pressure. So, denser it is the name is changing, low density fiber board, medium density fiber board, high density fiber board. What are these? Particles which are all leftovers which are after sawing the waste they are made into a pulp by adding adhesive. Then they are subjected to pressure. In case of high density fiber board, you have to also additionally put heat. So, what you see in the first one in the, in the views, in the pictures, you can find out the particles, you can see the particles in the cross section. Here also you can see the particles and that is why here you can understand them because they have not gone compaction properly and the pieces are also bit crude. So, they were not made finer. So, the grains are visible, the particles are visible. This one the third image is oriented strand board. See the orientation of the strands that is the long pieces are oriented in one direction when they are being made and they are then pressed. So, this oriented strand board has a part is a particular type of particle board where wood pieces or straws or pieces are placed, wood fibers are placed in a particular orientation. So, low cost, light weight, insulation all these are the key points to be remembered of these particle boards. These are weak not for structural purposes but as a filler wall, as a thermal insulator because of the addition of adhesive they have further improved thermal properties means they give you thermal insulation. Sound insulators you can use it, but remember they absorb moisture you cannot apply screw because they would not hold it. The fibers are not there to hold the screw rigidly. So, they will loosen with little bit of push to the member. So, usually they are not giving rigid rigidness to the screwed items, nailed items. Let us see the medium density fiber board and high density fiber board. I have a sample here. You can see this sample where you can see a little bit of the small fiber grains. But if you see the cross section, you cannot see what you could see in the particle board from any direction. But yes, you can understand it is made of something together, something being together. So, this is not like particle board, but much denser. So, there is application of pressure in the whole thing to form this kind of board. You can get 
big pieces, the edges are dressed, this can become a table top, this can become a chair top, it can take load, it can become a partition wall, all interior purposes you can use it. Because of its high density, it can hold screw, but screws are specially made for it. Remember that, not the normal screw which we use for wood. Where the screw actually, the fiber actually winds into the screw and gives it the hold. Here actually you are not doing that. So, special screws are there for MDF and HDF boards. For the high density fiber board which are also called as masonite, you also need to add heat when you are making it. So, that makes it more compact and the name just changes from medium density to high density. So, it is the same material and yes these fibers are also cut down into smaller smaller pieces. So, minimize the gaps. You can protect the edges by leaping to avoid it from moisture. So, moisture is the enemy because these are all wood items, termites are the enemy, but yes you can do a lot of coverage with such kind of material. So, here are the uses and the disadvantages and with this we conclude saying that engineered wood is obtained from natural wood and defects can be reduced. Large continuous surfaces can be made without use of joinery. So, it is more and more being used. It is stable because it has particularly plywood has grains in both the directions. So, they do not bend that is there is no minimum of warping. There is the role of adhesive in the strength of the item. Usually it is almost or at par with, with wood so far as strength is concerned. Joinery can be done for most of the cases, used preferred to be used as internal items for internal uses, cores when made of laminars, cores made of block boards, batten boards can go for doors, all internal doors can be made and we have to look into the water absorption how to check it by use of leaping. So, that gives a end to this engineered wood lecture. Thank you.